So in the first few sections of chapter 6, we're looking at parallelograms in general. In this section, we're about to narrow that down into certain types. And first type of special parallelogram is a rhombus. That's a parallelogram with four sides that are congruent. Uh, next type would be a rectangle. So that's a parallelogram with four right angles. So a uh, rectangle dealing with angles, rhombus dealing with the sides. And if I have both, uh, I call that a square. So a square is a parallelogram with four congruent sides and also four right angles. Uh, so if I'm trying to classify them, a square is considered a rhombus and also a rectangle. Um, so again, if I have four right angles, that's a rectangle. If I have four sides that are congruent, that's a rhombus. And if I have both, that's going to be a square. We have more rules than properties that that comes with uh, as well. So first of all, looking at a rhombus, if a parallelogram is a rhombus, then we know that the diagonals are perpendicular. Uh, so if I'm given a rhombus, again, that means that my diagonals, uh, first of all, they'll bisect each other because it's still a parallelogram, but also I'll know that they are perpendicular to each other as well. And just like with our other properties, we could reverse that and use the converse. If I know that the diagonals are perpendicular, that will also tell me that I have a rhombus. A uh, second property of par uh, sorry rhombuses is that if I have a rhombus, then each diagonal bisects a pair of opposite angles. So again, if I start by knowing a figure is a rhombus, that tells me if I draw diagonals, it will bisect those opposite angles in the corner. So 1 and 2 will be congruent, 3 and 4 will be congruent, 5 and 6 will be congruent, and 7 and 8 will be congruent. Each angle in that corner will be split up into two congruent pieces. And with our other rules as well, I can use the converse. So if I know that diagonals are being bisected um, for, or sorry, not the diagonals being bisected, if my diagonal is bisecting a pair of opposite angles in the corner, that will tell me that I have a rhombus. So I can use the converse of that rule as well. Uh, for a rectangle, I know that the diagonals are congruent. So uh, we don't know if they're perpendicular, but we do know that if I do have a rectangle, then uh, one diagonal, so for example, AC, will be congruent to the other one, uh, BD. And just with our other rules also, I can flip that around. So if I know the diagonals in a figure are congruent, that is enough to tell me that the figure will be a rectangle. So using that for a few questions here, uh, find the measures of the numbered angles in this rhombus A, B, C, D. So if I'm only given this part of angle B is 58, that tells me first of all the angle that I didn't have labeled next to it, that would also be 58 because that angle is being bisected. Uh, but more importantly, the ones that are labeled, two and three would also both be 58. And that comes first from the fact that if I have a parallelogram, uh, opposite angles are gonna be congruent. And if I split up those angles evenly, uh, those are both going to be the same no matter uh, what side of uh, that uh, parallelogram is going to be on. So 58 and 58. Also in the other corner, 58 and 58. Angle 1 we get from the property of a parallelogram that tells us that the diagonals are perpendicular. So if they're perpendicular, that tells us I'll have four right angles in the middle of that diagonal, where the, uh, sorry, in the middle of the rhombus where the diagonals meet. So angle 1 would be a right angle. That makes it 90. And to find out angle 4, I can use my answers from angles 1 and angle 3. If I know that angle 1 is 90 and angle 3 is 58, I know that angle 4 has to finish 180 for this triangle. So 90 plus 58, uh, that would be 148. If I subtract that from 180, that tells me that the last angle there is 32. So similar type of question for part B. Uh, this time if um, given 104 in this corner. Uh, first of all, I can tell that 1 and 3 it's going to finish the last part of that triangle. So if I take 180 and subtract 104, I know that 76, which I also know is being split evenly into angles 1 and 3 because these should be uh, congruent on opposite sides of that uh, rhombus. So if I know that if I take uh, 76 divided evenly, I get 38. Uh, so that tells me that angle 1 and angle 3 are 38. And since that uh, angle in the corner, so angle R and angle P, that's being bisected as well by the diagonal since I know I have a rhombus. So that makes angle 2 and angle 4 also 38. So all I have to do is find the first two. That uh, really gets me the other two as well. They're all going to be 38. Uh, next we're using our rectangle properties. So if I'm given that the length of SF is 2x plus 15, the length of RB is 5x minus 12, what I know about a rectangle is that the diagonals are going to be congruent. So I can set 2x plus 15 SF should be the same as 5x minus 12 from RB. So if I have those equal, I just want to make sure I combine, or sorry, not combine like terms, I just want to isolate for x. 
So if I isolate for x, I find that x is 9 in that equation. Uh, but since I was still asked for the length of each diagonal, I have to go back, take that answer, and plug in. Uh, so it doesn't really matter what equation I plug into. I plugged into the equation for x, uh, sorry, SF. 2 times 9 plus 15 should give us uh, 33. And you don't have to plug into the other equation uh, either. If I know the length of one diagonal, I know the length of the other one should be the same. So just plug in once, and we know either of them would be 33. Uh, next equation, uh, pretty similar. If I'm using that same rule from a rectangle, uh, the diagonals are congruent, so ln and mo would have the same length. If I set those equations equal, 4x minus 17 is going to be equal to 2x plus 13. We want to make sure we isolate for x there. Eventually we get x is 15. And just like the last question, I want to take that answer for x and plug it back into either one of those two expressions we had for those diagonals, because again, they should both be the same length. I think I picked to substitute an MO, so 2x plus 13. I replaced that with a 15, and we should get 43 for the length of that diagonal. We're also asked a little question at the bottom here. What type of triangle is PMN, so that triangle at the top of that rectangle? We know it's isosceles uh, because I know that I have congruent uh, diagonals. And also, since it's still a parallelogram, it is still being bisected. So if all of the diagonals are the same and they're both bisected the same, that tells me that uh, basically each segment of the diagonal is going to be congruent. And if I have two congruent segments, that tells me that it is isosceles. I don't know about the last length, so I can't say for sure if that's going to be equilateral, but we know it definitely at least has to be isosceles. So now moving on and adding in squares to those two that we already seen, a square is a quadrilateral again with four right angles and four congruent sides. So remember that makes a square not only a parallelogram, but also a rectangle and a rhombus. So it fits into all three of those categories. And that means it's going to have the properties of all three figures. Uh, so if we want to conclude if the figure below is a parallelogram, or sorry, we know it's a parallelogram. We want to uh, conclude if it's a rhombus, rectangle, or square. In part A, we know only that it's a rhombus because I have a diagonal which is bisecting opposite angles. Uh, my next figure, I know it's a square because I see a couple properties working at once. First of all, I see that uh, I have a perpendicular in the middle. Well, I guess I didn't list that first, but I know if I have perpendicular diagonals, that means I'll have a rhombus. And also, it looks like the two lengths will be the same uh, if every piece is marked congruent, just like that last question that we saw. That means the diagonals have the same length, so that means it's also a rectangle. And whenever it's a figure as a rhombus and a rectangle, that makes it a square. So I have a rhombus for the first figure and square for the second. Trying to use those properties again to solve uh, for what value of x is a, b, c, d a rhombus? We know that uh, a, b, c, d will be a rhombus if this angle in the corner is being bisected. So if I want that angle to be bisected, I need to set 6x minus 2, uh, one half of that angle to be equal to 4x plus 8, the other half of that angle. And again, just make sure we isolate for x here. We should end up with 5. Uh, next question, a similar type of setup. If I want uh, d, e, f, g to be a rectangle, that means I need the diagonals to be congruent, which also means I need their uh, parts to be congruent. So 5y plus 3 should be equal to the other part of that diagonal, 7y minus 5. And if I set those equal again, just want to make sure we solve for y, and we should end up getting y equals 4 when that is isolated. So last question at the bottom here. Uh, we want to use the triangle KLMN and the given information to solve each question. So a lot of angles there that we are, uh, have labeled. Let's see if we can find some of those that are missing. So in the first question, if we start out by knowing that angle 1 is 60, right away we know that angle 2 is 30 because these should be complementary. Since I know this is a rectangle, uh, each corner should be a right angle. So if I already have 60 degrees, 90 minus 60, uh, 90 minus 60 gives us 30 degrees for angle 2. And now if I'm looking for angle 5, uh, angle 5 will be alternate interior with angle 1. So if my answer for angle 1 was 60, then alternate interior angle for angle 5 should be 60 as well. And also, if I want to find 6, I could find that a few different ways. I know it's alternate interior with angle 2, so it's also 30. Or I can use the same rule from before. If I know that angle 5 is 60, I can do 90 minus 60, and that gives us 30 for angle 6, because again, I have a right angle in this corner. Uh, next question, if I know that angle 9 is 128, first thing we want to do is find angles 6 and 7. Uh, so we do that by remembering that this, uh, sorry, angle 6 and angle 7 should be congruent. 
So if I know that these are the same two angles and uh, I'm given angle 9, first thing I did was I took 180 and subtracted 128 because if I want to look only at this bottom triangle, uh, if I take 180 and subtract angle 9, that will give me the total that is split between angle 6 and 7. So if that's 52 degrees total that's missing there, if I divide that in half, I know that angle 6 and angle 7 are both 26 degrees. So if I know angle 7, that's going to help me find angle 8 because, again, I have a right angle here at angle K. So if I take 90 minus my answer for angle 7, so 90 minus 26, that gives us 64 degrees that is left for angle 8. So we want to be using those right angle rules to help solve that in a rectangle. Uh, last part is the proof here. And we know a few things to start with. We know, first of all, that ACDE uh, is a rectangle and also that AB... Uh, CE is a parallelogram, so we have a few overlapping shapes there. We want to use that to prove that triangle ABD is isosceles. So after we have that given information down, uh, 2 and 3 can be switched in either order. Or we're not using one to prove the other, so uh, again, doesn't really matter if you had that order flipped. Uh, but I said first that AD and EC will be congruent because if I'm looking only at this rectangle, I need to remember that the diagonals of a rectangle, so AD and EC, those are going to be congruent. So again, if I know that AD is congruent to EC, that was because a rectangle will always have congruent diagonals. Uh, for the next statement, we're using something similar. We're using a rule from this time, the parallelogram. Uh, we know that AB will be congruent to EC. If I'm only looking at the parallelogram, that would be saying the top side is congruent to the bottom side there. So AB and EC, since those were opposite sides in a parallelogram, those are going to be congruent. Uh, next, if I look at statements 2 and 3, I want to use that link between the two. So if I see that AD is congruent to EC and AB is congruent to the same thing, that tells me that AD and AB will also be congruent to each other. Remember, that's going to be transitive property. That's where I'm using um, either a segment or an angle as a link. So AD and AB congruent to the same thing. That means they're congruent to each other. Uh, last statement here, uh, that last step was important because if I know that AD and AB are congruent, that tells me that I have two legs that are congruent for uh, that triangle uh, ABD. So if I know I have congruent legs, that's enough to prove that that triangle is isosceles. Again, that's just saying that two sides are the same length. So we do have a little bit of another uh, lesson summary at the bottom there. I'll see if you guys can fill in, see if you can remember those properties. If you have to, you can go back and check. Uh, we'll look at those together in class also and see if we can add in a little bit more practice.